those tiny little moments, uh, we call those defining moments uh, around here, that when you're faced with the opportunity to do something or not do something, to do the right thing or not do the right thing, and by right thing I mean like doing something active for 10 minutes versus laying in bed for an extra 10 minutes, when you choose the right thing, even if it's tiny, even if it's small, that's what creates and maintains that momentum is the constant choice of doing the right thing even when it's not easy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. Today it is the Sales Wolf Podcast, as I am alone here in the studio. Uh, but my name is Tyler Harris. I am your host, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! If you can hear the background noise, it is Jill in the office next door doing some interviews and I am uh, quite glad that she just got to hear that howl while she's live on a call. But we are going to jump right in. This is episode 77. As you can see, my co-host, Joseph Caldwell, uh, is not in the office today, but we wanted to knock this podcast out anyways uh, and talk to you about something that has been a huge um, element of success, something that I've used as a catalyst for success uh, in my career. And I think it's something if you really take hold of, can do the same for you. And that is the topic of momentum. This is episode 77 on momentum. I've got an article, and I want to go through some of the key points in that article and just kind of wrap on that. Uh, and then we'll be done. This is going to be a short uh, podcast for you, but those are always good sometimes to sprinkle them in there as we get a little long-winded on some others. The first topic when it comes to not just gaining momentum, but this is really the focus of maintaining the momentum once you have it. The first point is to do something tiny every single day. This idea comes from uh, BJ Fogg at Stanford University, he's a researcher. He said, when you set the bar low, it's easier to stick to your goals. If you've just started trying to get back in shape, for example, forget you know an hour or 90 minute workout. Instead, do five minutes on the treadmill, five push-ups a day. Um, and something small like that, compounded over time, is gonna give you great results. So this first point, do something tiny every day, means just always pushing forward, always one step in front of the other, because you're gonna have days, even when you are in momentum, uh, where you just don't feel like doing anything. The key there is not to think, oh crap, I've gotta go run five miles today. No, like how about just go get active for 10 minutes and see what happens from there. It's those tiny little moments, uh, we call those defining moments uh, around here, that when you're faced with the opportunity to do something or not do something, to do the right thing or not do the right thing, and by right thing I mean like doing something active for 10 minutes versus laying in bed for an extra 10 minutes, when you choose the right thing, even if it's tiny, even if it's small, that's what creates and maintains that momentum is the constant choice of doing the right thing even when it's not easy. Number two, progress must be celebrated. So making progress in small ways doesn't always feel like it's making a big difference. So when you go out for that 10 minute jog, when you were thinking, hey, I should run five miles, it may, always, it may not always seem like you're making this huge difference, but research from Harvard University Business School discovered that recognizing your small progress every day is the key to productivity and coincidentally, it's also the key to happiness. To make the effect even greater, reward yourself, but only in ways that actually further your goals. Example, topping off a five mile run with a bowl of ice cream is different than rewarding yourself with a deep tissue massage. I can't explain how important that last part is. So it said, reward yourself, but if you wanna take it to the next level, reward yourself with something that's also gonna continue that momentum. So like he said, I ran five miles, I feel awesome, I'm gonna reward myself with this giant bowl of ice cream. How many of you have felt that way? How many of you have literally gone through that process in your head where you've justified the bowl of ice cream because I just ran five miles, I'm rewarding myself, I've been doing well, versus, in this example it said, no, after your five mile run, you're excited, you wanna, you wanna um, reward yourself, go get a deep tissue massage. Well, that deep tissue massage is gonna work your body and, and develop your body in a way that you can go run that mile 
tomorrow or the next day. And it's gonna keep in line with your goals and keep you on that right track uh, with your momentum. But you have to celebrate the small steps along the way um, or you'll just burn out. And that's what ultimately happens when you don't do that. Number three, focus on the smaller number. This one's extremely interesting. So you can measure progress by how much you've done or by how much you still, you still have left to do. Okay, so you can manage your progress by how much you've done or how much you still have left to do. Which do we think is the most important to focus on? How much we've done or how much we have left to do? I'm gonna bet this is gonna say on what we've done. Let's see. A study from the University of Chicago discovered that you'll be way more motivated if you focus on the smaller of the two numbers. For example, focus on the three pounds you've already lost, not the 17 more pounds to go. Each new action feels even more impactful when compared to a smaller number. So I guess the answer wasn't what you've done. The answer is just whichever is smaller because that's gonna psychologically put your head in the right place where it's focusing on the most um, accomplishable task. So in that example, focusing on the three pounds that you've lost versus the 17 that you still need to lose. However, if it's reversed and you've lost 17 and you only have three pounds left, then it flips and you can say, okay, I'm focused, I've only got three more pounds, three more pounds, we got this, three more pounds. When it's 17 though, that seems like a large goal to go after and it's like that eating an elephant one bite at a time. You're going after, okay, I've lost three pounds, I've lost four pounds, I've lost six pounds, I've lost eight pounds. But once that scale flips and the smaller number's on the other side, then it's six more pounds to go, five more pounds to go, four more pounds to go. It's a very interesting um, dynamic, especially when you apply it uh, to your business because especially in our business that we're in selling life insurance, it is a just audacious and daunting task to think that, hey, I've got 3,000 policies that I wanna sell this year, 3,000 policies. How in the world am I going to get there versus celebrating each week? Sold 75 policies this week. Awesome. Sold 50 policies this week. Awesome. Sold, you know, 100 policies this week. This month I did 328 policies. Awesome. And you're celebrating that over and over. And now what are we building to as, as that momentum is building? Um, those numbers are starting to grow. Okay. Now I've got 700 total. Now I've got 800 total. Now I've got 1400 total. Now I've got 1700 total. And then once that number that you need that you have left to sell starts getting to where it's not just smaller but significantly smaller where like crap, I only need 400 more policies to reach my goal of 3000. Then you can start working away and chipping away at that. And that will keep that momentum always at its highest um, and your motivation behind the momentum uh, will coincide. Four, keep a did it list. This article said, my son's school uses a program called Track My Progress for measuring homework completion rates, and every day he can see how he's improving. It works like magic to keep him engaged. This week, try keeping your own did it list. It's, it's, a, it's the opposite of a to-do list. Fill it with every single small task you complete. Keep it in a visible place. Research proves that seeing your progress and how much you have completed will inspire you to keep pushing. This is interesting because I've actually looked at adding this into my um, daily routine because my morning routine's pretty good now. Really trying to establish a better evening routine before I go to sleep and I think part of it is gonna include some form of this. And it's going back and just listing out the wins of the day. Um, it's impossible to lose the day if you're able to recount, remember, and go back through all of the wins that you had throughout the day. Because even in the worst days, we still have wins. And so it's important to focus on those. And if your focus is always on the wins, then it's almost like you disregard the losses because those losses were really just opportunities to learn more and win more the very next day. But keeping track of all those things that you did accomplish versus keeping track of that to-do list of the things that you've yet to accomplish will again put your head in the right um, state of mind for the, you to maintain that momentum longest. The last thing I'll say before I close is if you've ever felt true momentum, uh, whether that's in your business or whether that's with a certain goal with your health and fitness, if you've ever felt it, you know that that's a feeling that you never wanna lose. And so when you do feel momentum is at its peak, 
This is when I will stay the latest at work and make the most calls. I'll stay out and knock on the most doors. When you ever feel like you have that momentum, you feel unstoppable. Uh, you feel like there's no one that can answer the phone on the other end that could possibly tell me no because I'm absolutely unstoppable today. Whenever you feel that, because it's not every day you're going to feel that, I don't care who you are, Tony Robbins has days where he doesn't feel just unstoppable. When you have that feeling, you have to absolutely use it to its fullest because they don't come very often. And so make those 30 extra calls, knock on those 15 extra doors, stay super late, later than you've ever stayed. And I can promise you that that will help you maintain that momentum further. It will not somehow allow you uh, to use up the momentum that you have left. This is, is extremely contagious. And you can see it happening within organizations and sales organizations specifically when you have one, one guy or girl that's just got all this momentum and they're just like dialing and, and just setting appointments and making sales. It becomes this kind of infectious thing that goes throughout the organization where everybody's like, well, so-and-so, they're doing this and holy crap, like I got to get on it. And it can truly change the culture uh, of your organization just by you noticing, being aware that you have momentum and then wanting to absolutely lay it, lay the hammer down once that momentum uh, is achieved and to maintain it as long as you possibly can. Uh, momentum is one of the keys to success. It's how to get it, how to harness it, and then how to maintain it once you've got it so that you can have the most prolonged periods of success in your career. So guys, with that, um, this is a quick, short Sales Wolves podcast. This was number 77 on the topic of momentum. I am your host, Tyler Harris. I am a sales wolf. Ow. <laughs>